Hey guys, so in this video, I'll be showing you how to use CTX feed in order to create a WooCommerce product feed in order to upload to Google Shopping. So you can try this plugin out for free by clicking the link here or in the description below, or you can purchase a pro version of the plugin, which you can see the pricing for for a single site over here. So it's 119 US per year, or you can get a lifetime license. So you, you only need to pay once, but you can get started for free by checking out their free version here. So first, what we want to do is open up our WordPress dashboard. Okay, so here in the WordPress dashboard, what you want to do is go into plugins and add new, and we're going to search for CTX feed. In this video, I'm using the pro version of CTX feed, but you can follow along using the free version as well. So we'll just click update. Okay, great. So the plugin has been updated. So first, let's go into creating a new feed. So You'll need to have a WooCommerce store, so make sure that you have products already in your store. Okay, so what you want to do first is go down into CTX plugin and go into make feed. Okay, and then over here you can select the country which your business operates in. So in my case, it'll be Canada, but you can view all the available countries here. Okay, so next we'll select the template for our feed. So in our case, we'll be doing Google Shopping. So you can see all the popular templates they have available. So they have templates as well, such as the Facebook catalog, as well as TikTok ads. So you can see all the available templates and you can select the one which you're trying to create a feed for. So let's just select Google Shopping. Okay, and then you can give it a name. So it will be called My Store Feed. Okay, and then over here, you can start to see that they added a lot of the necessary attributes in order to create the feed. So you can just look through these and see that they apply to your store. Okay, so if you're just looking for a basic feed, you can just use the one here by default. So it just update and generate feed. Okay, so now it's creating the feed. Okay, great. So it created the link here. So let's see the feed and awesome. So we see our XML file here with our products so you can see all the data so like the title the category the type so all the data that is necessary to submit into google merchant center okay so next let's go over the features that are available in ctx feed that makes it easier to update products to google merchant center okay so we'll start with attribute mapping over here Okay, so this is an important feature of the CTX plugin, and it's also very important for Google Shopping. So if you want to create a more optimized product title, so you can combine attributes. So in our case, let's do one with title and brand. So we'll do add new attribute mapping. Okay, so we'll just give this a name. Let's name it title with brand. Okay, and then we'll select the attributes, so the title. Okay, and then go down and add a certain brand. Okay, so product brand. Okay, and then if you want a custom separator, then you can do that here, but you can keep it by default and it'll just be a space. So we'll do save attribute mapping. Okay, great. So this has been created. So now let's update our feed to include this custom attribute map as our title. So go into manage feed. Okay, so let's go into edit our store feed. Okay, and then over here for our product title, we can scroll down to the bottom and over here we can see title with brand. So that's the attribute map that we created. Okay, and then we can just save this feed. Okay, great. So now the feed has been saved. Okay, and then next let's go over dynamic attributes, which is the next feature offered in the CTX feed plugin. Okay, so this is another feature which allows you to create custom versions of existing attributes without needing to change the actual product data. So say if you want different descriptions in your WooCommerce store and the one you upload to Google Shopping, then you can do that here. So let's create a new dynamic attribute. Okay, so we'll do dynamic size. So we'll just change like small to S. So we'll just name this dynamic size. Okay, so we can select our attributes. So I'll do size. So say if size is equal to small, 
And then over here, we'll just change the output to S. Okay, and then we can do the rest for the other sizes. So we'll do medium. This will be M and then large. So also select the correct attribute. So size, the large and text will be L. Okay, and if there's a default one, you can just set it here if, to handle any remaining cases. So we can just say all size. Okay, and we'll save this dynamic attribute. Okay, great. So now let's implement this in our feed. So again, go back to manage feed. Okay, and when you make any changes to your feed, you'll get prompted with this notification to clear your cache. So just remember to do that. Okay, so next let's go into edit feed. Okay, and then scroll down here to the bottom and I'll just add a new attribute. So do new here, and then I'll select the attribute. Okay, so I'll just search size. Okay, size of the item. Okay, and then I'll select the dynamic attribute that we created. Okay, so we have dynamic size over here. Okay, great. So that's how you set up dynamic attributes. So I'll click save. Okay, so next what we're going to go over is category mapping over here. So this allows you to create custom mappings for your categories. Okay, so go into category mapping and we'll create a new mapping. Okay, add new mapping. Okay, so we'll select the merchant. So this will be for Google Shopping and then we'll just say Google Mapping. Okay, and then you want to see the categories here available. Okay, so if you click into the category here, it'll show you all the available categories for Google Shopping. Okay, so let's say for clothing here, you can search clothing. And awesome, so it shows us all the available categories. So we can just do clothing because this is just a general one. And then over here, we can search, say, sweater. Okay, so there's no sweater, so we can just keep it under clothing as that would be a relevant category. Okay, so let's search shirt. Great, so there's a deeper category for this one for shirts and tops, so we can use that. And then accessories, so search accessories. Okay, so not birdcage accessories, so just make sure it also applies to the parent categories. So just scroll down here. Okay, so I can just keep it as apparel and accessories here. And then last one is jackets. So just search jackets. And awesome. So there's a deeper category for this as well. So it's coats and jackets and we can save this. Okay, so now let's apply this to our feed. So go into manage feed. And again, clear cache. And then edit product feed. Okay, and then what you want to do here is down in the Google product category, down here, we can select our custom mapping that we created. So we can change this to attributes and then we scroll down to the bottom and then we can select our Google mapping under category mapping. Okay, great. So this is good. Let's save. Okay, and lastly, let's go over the string replace feature. So if you need to clean up any customized product data, then you can use this feature so you don't have to manually edit each say description okay so let's just go into our products and find an example okay so just this first product here so i'll just go to edit okay so let's just say this example here cotton bro let's just change that to cb so say if you have 100 products and you need to do this for each one we can just do this automatically using the string replace feature Okay, so we can do this directly in our feed. So go back to your feed and then go into edit. Okay, and then we want to go here into filter. Okay, and then we can do the string replace down here. So let's just do product description. Okay, so it's cotton bro. And let's change it to CB. Okay, and save. Okay, so that's been saved. And again, let's clear the cache. Okay, and then just finishing off our feed here, you can look at their filter so you can remove any back order products here or out of stock products. Okay, so you can update these if any of these apply to your business. 
okay, as well as shipping countries. So you can do this within Google Merchant Center as well. But if you want to do it all at once, then you can do it within CTX feed. Okay, and then advanced filters. Okay, so you can add a condition here if you want to do any additional filtering. Then you can do that within their advanced filter section. But I'll just omit any advanced filters for now. So I'll just remove this. Okay, great. So now let's update and generate the feed. Okay, and we can view the feed here. Awesome, so here's all our products and this is what we'll submit to Google Shopping. Okay, so you can just copy the link here and then open up your Google Merchant Center and then we can add products. Okay, and then we're gonna do add products to file and then you can just paste in the XML file generated by CTX feed, and then you can just schedule when you want it to update. So every 24 hours is good. Okay, and continue. Awesome. So now all of the products are being imported and you can just view the process here. Okay, great. So our products has been uploaded here. So we can see seven products added and then it says no issues found. So we were able to seamlessly upload our WooCommerce products to Google Shopping using the CTX feed plugin. And again, you can check out the pro version here if you want to get more access to their advanced features. And I would recommend this plugin if you're looking for an easy way to integrate your WooCommerce products to Google Shopping. So this concludes the end of the video. I hope you're able to follow along and learn more about the CTX feed plugin and how it's an easy solution to upload your WooCommerce products to Google Shopping. And again, you can check out the pro version of their plugin to get access to more advanced features, or you can stick with the free version and, and upgrade when it's suitable for your business. So please like and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest videos and thanks for watching.